The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar in and out of the cigar industry. We're on a mission from God. With your host, a jelly donut, David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you. And I care. Barry Stein. I'm just going to use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, February 16th, 2019. Francisco Batista is the managing director of operations in the Dominican Republic for a company that's celebrating 115 years in the cigar business. They employ thousands of produce of cigars and produce over thousands of people and produce over 700 million cigars every Ooh. year to over a hundred countries. And they may be the biggest cigar company you don't even know about. We're going to talk about them today. Welcome everybody to the Cigar Authority. And you are listening to the Cigar Authority now in its ninth year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Those are real numbers. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Okay, with us via Google Hangouts this time... um, from, I believe, the Dominican Republic, from Royal Agio Cigars, the makers of Balmoral Cigars, is Francisco Batista. Francisco, can you hear us? I can hear you perfectly. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, I was worrying about this, uh, this stuff as it's going on. We're bringing somebody in from another country. Is it going to work out? It does work out. Francisco, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for the invitation. For me, it's a pleasure to be today with you guys. It's an honor to have you. It's an honor to have you because we didn't think we were going to have you on today because congratulations to you, a new baby girl on your side over there, brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a brand new girl just uh, came last Sunday. So I was a little bit hesitant if I could make it because she was supposed to, to come yesterday, but she came one week earlier. So we wow. are here. I'm happy to be here. I thank and her yes. thank her for doing that because uh, she came early so that we can have you on the show. And her, her name is Saul, huh? S-O-L? Saul. S-O-L, correct. Saul Batista. Which is the sun. Which is sun, which means suns. Yeah, correct. She, she'll be the sunshine in your eye, that's for sure. Congratulations. For sure. So what better to do than actually uh, light up a cigar in her, in her honor and, and a cigar that you're making there in the Dominican Republic called Balmoral, Connecticut. Is that right? Correct. It's Balmoral Añejo, Connecticut. Okay. So, Barry, what do we know about this? Well, today's first cigar is the Balmoral Añejo XO, Connecticut, and it's manufactured in the Dominican Republic for Royal Agio. The size is a 5x55 Rothschild Massivo, and it features a USA Connecticut shade wrapper over Ecuadorian Sumatra binder with fillers consisting of Dominican Olor, Pennsylvania 41, and exclusive store-cut Brazilian Mata Norte. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back $10.39, while a box is $183.99, which is a savings of almost $24 or 11% off the box price on TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, GuysCigars.com. It is Massivo. It's got a a weight to it. It's got some good weight. It's got a beautiful royal blue band on this. And royalty, the name of the company is Royal Agio. Is there royalty here? Is there real royalty? It's real royalty. It's real royalty. We... We spent a couple of years trying to get the, the, the perfect blend, uh, especially because we were working with a Connecticut uh, shade wrapper from the Connecticut Valley. And we, want, we like to break molds. Eh? We didn't want to make just an, another Connecticut cigar. We wanted to do something that, that uh, challenged a little bit the Connecticut smokers, but also the, the Maduro, Maduro connoisseurs. So it is a Connecticut uh, wrapper but it has some nice spices, nice strength, nice flavors on it. 
that could be actually smoked by any cigar smokers. Let's uh, let's address the elephant in the room, and I'm not sure if this can be done over Google Hangouts, but I've been looking to be knighted for a long time. Uh, is it possible for you to knight me over Google Hangouts? Can that happen? Sorry? To make me a knight. He wants to be royalty. He wants to be sir, Mr. Jonathan. Yeah, he wants to be royalty because <laughs> the company is real royalty. The, the queen, okay. The queen has uh, spoken to your company and made it royalty, and Mr. Jonathan would like to be royalty also. But he can't. Well, unfortunately, we cannot do it for the Dominican Republic because we don't have a king or a queen. Ah. You have to go to Holland for that. You get over to Holland. I can. I can arrange that, eh? All right. Okay. So let me know. All right. I'll be on that. All right. So we're going to get a, give it a cut and light and see what this is all about. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. And if you were to blindfold yourself, and this is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, we have... 700 or so people more more uh smoking the cigar along with us um taste the cigar before you light it and it doesn't taste like a normal connecticut it tastes like this something you know, going it, it on could, in there it could be meaty it could be a sun-grown tobacco but you're looking at it you can tell it right. is but if you were blindfolded you would assume that this has a little more going on than just a regular connecticut and that and that's the idea i guess that's happening here if i understand what you're saying because barry Correct. um says what, what your, your catchphrase here barry is it's uh, not your grandfather's connecticut it's not, your, it's not what you expect a connecticut to taste like right correct correct that was the idea from the beginning and I think we succeeded. I mean, the, just the, the feedback we have get for Connecticut smokers and for, for more cigars connoisseurs and Maduro smokers is that it's really a nice cigar. A lot of flavor. It's a, it's a medium strength at the most. If it doesn't go that to medium full, but it has a, a nice peppery white pepper, a very nice vanilla very creamy and complex through the smoke. Now, what kind of tobaccos are you using inside? Is this a Dominican blend or it's tobacco from elsewhere? No, it's a, it's a little bit of everything. I explained you, as you say, the, the wrapper is a Connecticut shade uh, wrapper. The binder, it is a Ecuadorian Sumatra wow. binder. Actually, we don't, we don't advertise it, but the reality is it's from a crop, 99 crop. It's a very nice uh, binder that we're using in this cigar. And inside on the filler, we have a combination of Dominican Olor for the San Victor region, which is a little bit more sweeter. It burns great. Mm. And uh, also combined with uh, a little bit of the PA41 Pennsylvania tobacco, ah. which gives a little bit of uh, the kick on the cigar. And then that underlying sweetness that comes from our exclusive uh, Mata Norte Brazilian tobacco. Isn't that something? Uh, um, one of the guys down in the store earlier today say there's some Pennsylvania in there, and I said I don't know about that, but there is Pennsylvania in there that that um, they figured out of, of tasting a cigar. So let's light her up. All right, let's we're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Commissioner. The Vertigo Commissioner features single action, meaning you press the button and the lid pops. You got two jets angled ever so slightly, so you get pinpoint accuracy, even though there's two jets. You got a flip out bullet punch. It's the Vertigo Commissioner, and it retails for twenty nine ninety nine. Okay. I was really hoping that I was going to be able to become a knight by the end of this show. Yeah, you got to go see a. a I got to go to Holland. That's an expensive see. ticket. Yeah. To be knighted, it may be worth it. To be sure. We can figure. We can figure out some. He's a guy that wants to be called Mr., and he would like to change that to be called Sir. God damn it. So would it be Sir Mr. Johnson, or would it just be Mr. Jonathan, or would it be just Sir Jonathan? I think I would have to change it to Sir Jonathan. Yeah, and you'd be proud to do it. I would do something that Barry Stein has been unable to do for two and a half years. I would legally change my name, and that's how it would show up on my Here license. We go. All right, so Royal Agio uh, makes, uh, as I said um, at the beginning of this, 700 million cigars per year. 700 uh, actually, a little bit more. A little bit more. Actually, a little bit more. So that yeah, people... We are almost touching... 
so the people on the scan, almost 800. Wow. So people understand that there's about 300 million premium cigars that come into the U.S. a year. You guys are making more than twice that, but not every cigar is considered a premium cigar. Or how does this work? Well, actually, we are we are in the segment of the premium tobaccos. Even our cigarillos, machine makes cigarillos on Panther. They are made with premium tobaccos. It's basically the DNA of the company. We we search for the best tobaccos and uh, yeah, and we use it in all our cigars. And I I can attest to that because I had the honor to go visit visit you. I love the birds in the background. Doesn't it sound nice? We got snow banks over here, but you got nice <laughs> birds playing uh, in the back. It's beautiful. But I had I had okay. the honor to go down there and see your operation there and spend some time with you. Uh, by the way, sure. the cleanest, most organized cigar factory that I ever saw. And it's not where everybody else is. It, it's at, um, what's the name of the city there? The, it's San Pedro de Macorís. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, in a, it's in the southeast part of the country, one hour away from uh, Santo Domingo, uh, one hour away from Punta Cana, surrounded of beautiful beaches and a nice beautiful. history on the town. Oh, beautiful. Um, and um, the, the, the factory, I mean, is almost... Um, in order to make that, cleanse, like, in order clean. to make that many cigars, you'd have to be at the very least organized. But add to that on top of it, clean. And I'll tell you right out of the gate here, you want to talk about a solid burn, a perfect combustion, a great draw, amazing flavor. So I'll tell you, even the uh, machine-made products like cigarillos and things like that, it, it, you see the most beautiful leaf that is is pristine. You know, they they have leaves that have holes in them and those are um, put as something else or whatever and you're right. buying buy a, a perfect leaf. They take a perfect leaf and then they put it through this thrasher that actually chops it up and it's like, oh my God, ah! That they're, they're <laughs> chopping up beautiful leaf. But the, the idea is we are making a quality product and it, it's asking for pieces in this one. So we're going to take this beautiful perfect leaf and we're going to turn it into pieces. Not get the crap that's left over from other people, right. which is what you, the majority of what uh, other people do. But you're dealing with premium tobacco to begin with. That's correct. That's correct. And, and I can basically attest the, to what I saw it. Yep, yep. You are correct. Yep. P people may say it, but I saw this uh, with my own eyes, and I wouldn't have believed it unless they saw it. So I'm telling you, I saw it, uh, that that's what they're doing. What a shame, but... Then again, when you have to produce 700 million cigars, you got to deal with a uh, good product to begin with. So uh, are you guys the leader in cigars? No, no. We are in the top four, top four position. Really? Worldwide. Okay, because that is an awful lot, 700 million cigars. Speaking of positions, you're the managing director of operations in the Dominican Republic. What is that? What do you do? What defines well, managing director? Well, basically, I'm the general manager of operations in the in the, the factory in San Pedro de Macorís. So basically, I'm responsible of all the production of the machine-made cigars, the hand-made cigars, and also uh, I got a new role last year that is a premium cigar master blender as well. So basically, I, I control everything that we do in the factory. Uh, we we source leaf, uh, we blend cigars. We control the efficiencies. We control the quality. So it's a uh, yeah, it's it's all in, all in one. So as master blender, did you have your hands in on creating the Balmoral, Connecticut? Yes, yes, sure. What was the well, biggest challenge uh, for you? Well, the biggest challenges for us was basically what I told you just uh, minutes ago that we, we didn't want to have just another Balmoral, Connecticut, another Connecticut wrapper cigar. We wanted to challenge the the smokers. Uh, we wanted to attract also the Maduro smokers that they can uh, feel, they can smoke a cigar with a Connecticut wrapper that have flavor on it, that is not thin on flavor like the others. They have some complexity. They have some nice uh, uh, overall flavors. Uh, when you retrohale it, you can you can notice that the cigar is clean. You can catch up a whole lot of. Uh, aromas and flavors for your nose as well and it keep your palate as you smoke the cigar very clean you don't have this bitterness that is typically 
on the Connecticut uh, yeah. shade wrappers. That's true. This, the spitterness is completely. It's you don't even uh, if you don't see the wrapper, you would it's know. Hard it. to tell that you are smoking that you are smoking a Connecticut. I was saying to wrapper. Dave this morning that I'm pretty much done with Connecticut shades right now because I, I feel like I've just smoked so many of them and I'm just tired of that taste. And I've been going with Sun Growns and going with Maduros, but this could be in my regular rotation. If you didn't see it, you didn't know it. Right. So does that be working with Connecticut? Does that become the most difficult thing is, okay, I need something inside here to take away that flavor of what some people would say is, yeah, it's just not, uh, it's not giving me enough flavor. It's, you, you got to overpower the, the other flavor. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you see the combination that we did on the, in the selection of the tobaccos, it took us almost two years to get here. And uh, basically we started testing with uh, maybe 10 different binders none of them gave us that 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 overall uh, multi-layer fla uh, flavors that we were expecting and we ended up by by testing this very nice ecuadorian sumatra wrapper and we fall in love but then we needed to to raise a little bit the strength of the cigar but in such a way that does not overpower so we start doing some samples and when we really put our hands in the pa41 from pennsylvania and we fermented uh, much longer to to take a little bit that ammonia and the harshness that can be in that tobacco, we were completely overwhelmed with uh, with what we achieved. Yeah, none of none of it's there. There's no harshness here, but there's plenty of flavor. Surprisingly, of Dominican tobacco, uh, I taste pepper like I would assume there is Nicaraguan tobacco in here. Right, but you didn't mention Nicaragua. Maybe that's a little of Pennsylvania nope. that's coming in that I'm tasting. Yep. Right. Sure, it's a little bit of that underlying sweetness and earthiness that is coming from the from the Brazilian Mata Norte also, which is a, more or less one of the signature tobaccos that we use in the Balmoral Añejo lines. So you can expect that between all the Balmoral Añejo cigars, there's a line underlying sweetness that is common in these cigars. It's part of our brand identity. Okay, so let's talk about all the different uh, Balmorals that there are. This would be the okay. mildest, maybe at, at a, uh, a 1 to 10, I would say, a straight medium 5 that may be here. What else, do, what else do you have? No, correct. Well, uh, everything started with the Balmoral Añejo already seven years ago when uh, Boris Wintermans created the Balmoral Añejo 18. That we actually, by the time we put the cigar on the market, the wrapper was 20 years old. Right. It was a Brazilian and Abriaca wrapper. Uh, but it was a limited production because we, yeah, we couldn't produce forever because we have a limited availability sure. of the Arapiraca wrapper. So then we have to challenge ourselves and we created the Barmola Añejo XO that we call it now Classic, which is uh, it's the same blend, but we changed the wrapper for a newer crop, which still was 2008. And you consider so that this, the Maduro? You consider that the Yes. Ma okay. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Maduro. Yeah. Then last, last year... On the IPCPR, we came, and maybe we were one of the companies who came with a, a broader uh, lines of t extensions for the show, and we introduced the Balmoral Añejo Oscuro. It's a beautiful, robust, bold cigar with a San Andres uh, wrapper. Uh, the binder is an Olor Dominicano in a combination of fillers from uh, Jalapa, Ligero, yeah. some uh, Olor Dominicano Ligero from San Victor area, which is the one we use, and our signature tobacco from uh, Mata Norte as well, or the prime in the, uh, Ligero leaves as well. So the Brazilian is in every single blend. You have a little of that in every single blend? Yes. Okay. Yes, correct. So that, and, and that's that's to keep that, 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 that sweetness that you, that you can catch on the cigars okay. when you smoke it. So, so that little right. signature taste is going to appear in every single one of them. Is there uh, something new coming for this IPCPR? I, I know it's a ways off. You've got six months. Sure. So you, it must be something sure. you're working on now. Sure, but coming back to the complete line, yeah. we also did for the IPCPR last year, we introduced then the Bamoro Añejo Connecticut, the one we are smoking. Yeah. But next to that, next to that, we did a very nice collaboration, which I, I have to thank you personally and in behalf of Agio, for nice uh, review that you did on wow. the Balmoral Sedia Signatura Sueto, the ovation. Yeah, beautiful we were, cigar, beautiful. We were thrilled, we were thrilled, we were honored with your review. 
And we also uh, agree with you. We consider that this is a, that's a superb cigar. Yeah. So you so, you work with Ernesto Carrillo with that. Is, is that right? Yeah, Ernesto, yeah, Ernesto Perez Carrillo, we work. Uh, Boris Wintermans, Ernesto Perez Carrillo, myself, we work. And we both blend and we use tobacco, which are signature tobacco from both factories. And over there, Ernesto, which masters the Nicaraguan tobaccos, we were able to get into a point that that we slide a little bit of that Mata Norte to create a different change profile and to give a little bit of that Balmoral alike to the cigar. What was that and like? Yeah. What was that like working with another blender? Because I, I know when when it comes to podcasting, for example, you get a lot of big egos. So you got someone like uh, Ernesto, who's a humble man, but knows his stuff when it comes to blending. You clearly know your stuff. So was yeah. there any ego involved where? You know, you kind of end up pushing the blend a little in your direction. He's trying to push it in his direction, or was it just a seamless working relationship? Look, you're you're completely right. When we started this project and we start with the concept, that was one of our major. Yeah, we were very scared that we will have a battle of egos coming into into that collaboration. Too many but cooks you know in the Ernesto. kitchen, right? Too many cooks in the kitchen yeah. could be. Yeah, but you know, Ernest. Yeah, is one of the most humble men in the industry, uh, and is of course quite knowledgeable. But it took us it took us several trials. Uh, uh, we we changed for one tobacco to another, and uh, I think uh, the combination that we were able to achieve and post the humble for the, the the character of Boris Wintermans, which was also very humble, and Ernesto, they they did a great match, and it was easy to work with it. At the end, the blend that we selected, that we all selected, it was unanimous. Everybody, wow. so it was it was easy. Oh it wow. Was easy. Okay, and where did the uh, cigar get created, uh, made? Sorry? Where is it handmade? In your factory? It's handmade in, no, no, it's handmade in the Tabacalera La Alianza, in Ernesto factory. Okay, and so, so you, you went it, over there, you saw the production, you said, okay. Correct. And, and brought there, okay. No, correct. We, well, no, we started, we, we, we work in the com in complete process of blending the cigar together. It was really a corporation, a very nice corporation, and... I thank Ernesto because, uh, yeah, from somebody for Ernesto, you learn a lot. Ah, it's absolutely. A person who likes to, it's a person who likes to teach. It's a person who can listen. It's a person that is very easy to work with. And this set the bar very high for our next future cooperation. Absolutely. Because y y we already have Ernesto, which just recently won the Best Cigar of the Year by Cigar Aficionado. Right. So what's, what's next? Eh? <laughs> That's what so I'm asking. What's next? Yes. Is there another collaboration well, that you're currently working on? Yes, yes, we are working uh, in a different in a new collaboration, which is going to be very exciting. I cannot tell you the name, <laughs> but uh, but for sure, for sure, when we come out with the names, you're going to be one of the first to know. I promise you that. I will call you personally to let you know. Can you tell and, us? Uh, can, you, got, can you tell us if you're going to love? Can you tell us if the person's got, based in the Dominican Republic or if he's based in another? cigar making region country we're still we, i still cannot tell you okay but i promise you but i promise you first letter first letter first letter of his last name nothing okay but i told and next to that <laughs> next to that we are coming we are coming also with an extension of the balmoro añejo xo yeah so there's going to come a new line it's going to be a little bit more on the uh close to full strength more bold cigar a little bit more of flavor that it's we are basically filling all the gaps that we have in our portfolio. Okay. As you know, we start we started our new distribution recently. Yeah. In United States. Yes. And we just want to tell to the consumers in the United States that we are here, we are here to stay, and we're gonna surprise and keep on surprising everybody every year with new releases. Beautiful. I look forward to it. Uh, there's another release, another brand that you guys came out with, which was San Pedro. Tell us a little about that brand. Well, San Pedro, it's it came as it's it's actually the 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 place where we have our boutique factory in Dominican Republic. So the the name of San Pedro is basically a tribute to the town, a tribute to the people of San Pedro de Macorís, who has hosted us for almost thirty years in Dominican Republic. And uh, yeah, we wanted to honor them, and one we wanted to honor with a. Uh, with a premium cigar, but also with a very nice price point. So just figure it out that you can smoke a really nice premium cigar for five, a Robusto for $5.50.
That's good. So we we st- we started the line with uh, with the first release was a, a San Pedro de Macorís Ecuador with an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. Next to that, we also launched the the Brazil with an Arapiraca wrapper. And just last week, for the TPE show, we launched two lines extensions for the San Pedro de Macorís, which is a Nicaraguan wrapper and an Ecuadorian song grown Havana song grown wrapper as well. Both both of two. These two new lines are coming to really to to take over that segment of the market. So the insides of the cigars is everything else the same except the wrapper, or you must tweak the inside nope. also? No, we, we tweak the inside offer. The wrapper is different, but we also incorporate in these two new blends a little bit more of Nicaragua, uh, Esteli, Viso, Tobacco on it to little bit spice a little bit more of the blend to give more uh, bolder taste to the blend, more creaminess. And, uh, and yes, to for the more connoisseur cigars, so they can have an affordable everyday cigar for for a decent price. Nice, nice. All right. So some early uh, thoughts here on the flavor as we smoke the cigar. What do you guys get? If you put a, just a just a little bit of white pepper on fruit striped gum, you you actually you got to chew the gum for a little while, like maybe five minutes in, get some of the intense flavors off. It's yeah. more subtle than that. Take the gum out, put a little white pepper on it, put it back in. That's what I'm getting. You know, I'm not far off from him. I'm not going to fruit stripe gum, but I have cherry with pepper. I have a little bit of cherry sweetness, sure. but I also have a little bit of the yellow fruit stripe gum. Let me get this. Let me get this for you. So, so I think you both got it. <laughs> so screw you, Ed Sullivan. <laughs> it's, it's, Listen, there's, there's a lot of people smoking a cigar along, but you, you taste an underlying cherry sweetness to it. Light, You're light, light. You're trying to get me to taste cherry, and it's not going to happen. It's fruit strike gum. What's, what That's flavor is fruit, yeah, fruit, fruit strike gum? What color is your fruit strike gum? I got the it's, yellow fruit strike gum with some cherry and the caramel original. on the finish. There the is original. no original. There's, there's no five original. different flavors yeah, There's the red, the green, no. the yellow, the purple. No, it's, the, it's the rainbow one, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, do, I wish I had a taser yeah. that I could just shock him. If I, if I didn't think it would kill him, yeah. I would just, you know, low setting. So you're going to hear this, that people are going to describe your cigar, but as a blender, do you taste these things or, or we're out of our minds? No, no, sure, sure. You, you, I think you get the blend right. I think we get a little bit of, of vanilla. The white pepper is, is definitely there. There it is, yeah, very definitely. Present, very mild. That, that, that sweetness that you, it can be actually... Uh, describe as a cherry sweetness, yes. It's also the the, the this stock called Brazil Matanorte. It has this a little bit of this uh, chocolate, this uh, uh, espresso uh, espresso uh, taste as well. So I think you got it completely right. Uh, the same as we we describe it. And I, I'm going to say it's not the first time I smoked a cigar anyway, but this is a Connecticut cigar that if you didn't see it was Connecticut, I blindfolded, I think nobody would say this is Connecticut. No. You'd actually I'm even something I'm, else. I'm doing something you're not supposed to do with Connecticut, and I'm, I'm intentionally smoking a little wet. I'm, I'm not keeping the end dry, which yeah. I'm, I want to see if I can get it to be bitter. But so far, even though the end of my cigar is quite wet, there's no bitterness happening. Very, very, very well done. Yeah, it's good job, good job, uh, Francisco Batista. Uh, we're gonna see you at the at the IPCPR. You coming uh, to visit? Sure. And show sure, us the sure. new product. And, I will be there. All right, and we're gonna look for you for the surprise of whatever this guy is. We'll be having our guesses later on. But thank you so much. I'll let you go back to your little baby girl. And thank you for uh, coming on the show and uh, taking time out. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. And uh, see you in Vegas. See you in Vegas. Okay, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, uh, what might pair well with this cigar? Um, Not just food and drink, but how about music, movies, events, occasions, odd topics of what a cigar will pair with when we come back. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. 
Berlin Wall Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper, considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez, full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper, rich in bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice, and available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum, competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper, fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Christoph cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Christoph is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Christoph. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, 
Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut Cigar because they demand more. Hello, this is Houston Aurora from Jerry Tobacco. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we're back. We're smoking the Balmoral, Connecticut Rothschild. They don't use a lot of Rothschilds anymore. It's robust. They don't. Usually, this is the Rothschild. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, now we're going to talk about pairing, pairing cigars with all kinds of things. So obviously, we're smoking this one. And uh, it was great to have uh, Francisco Batista from Royal Agio on. But now he's not here. He can't hear this ridiculous stuff you're going to say. But what are you going to match this with? You, you, you're sm- smoking this. So let's start with the easiest thing. You pair it with food. I got the perfect thing. It's going to be Applewood smoked bacon. Okay. I know you're not a fan of bacon, Dave, but nope. you got you got the the part of your palate that's going to fill out. There's not a whole lot of salt going on here, so we're going to add a little salt into the mix and complement that with the sweetness. You're not far off, even even though I'm not digging on the swine, but I'm taking turkey sausage ah. with peppers and onions. Let's see, that's a party right there. And this cigar. Nailed it. See, I would pair it with a, with a Dominican dish called Mofongo. Of course you're going to pick the most obscure yeah. shit. This that was, would that, pair that, really well with some Mofongo. And yeah. a nice ice-cold Presidente. And the big ball yeah. yes. on the thing at, at the top of, um, um, what is that, the um, David? Uh, Camp David. Camp David of the Mofongo on Camp David. Nice presentation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm going in a different direction. I'm going with a vanilla bean ice cream. Mm. Ah, you're picking up the vanilla notes. I like that. I think it would be delicious. Nice, nice. Okay, so... um, Barry said his drink, so you got to go with your drink. Of course, his was alcohol. Yeah, I'd have ginger ale. I want a ginger ale with this. (laughs) See, I'm going with the apple theme here, and I'm going apple cider. Really? Cold or hot? Is there even a question? Of course, it's hot. Hot apple cider. That's a good time, hot apple cider. Yeah, I like it. Got to be close to a bathroom, though. It triggers yeah. something. Something happens. <laughs> Never had it until I moved up to New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, Always really? Had it cold. Ah, hot right. apple cider is a good time. Well, I'll stick with kind of a vanilla theme. And how about a cream soda with this? Ah. Yeah. Could work. That's a good yeah, I think that might be better than the ginger ale. I'm going to give it I'd to I'd like you. to change my answer from Presidente to a chocolate egg cream. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Uh, At least there's no chewing. How about a movie? Now, by the way, did you see The Godfather Part 2 yet? Yes. And? Better than Part 1. Isn't it true? <laughs> it's the only one. It's the only movie ever that I have saw that Part 2 is better than Part 1. Would, wouldn't you agree, Mr. Jonathan? <laughs> I wouldn't know because I haven't seen either of them. See. But Rocky 2 was better than 1. That's another one. I'll so give you that. Wrong. Really? Yeah. yeah. I thought Rocky Two was better. You can't do Rocky Two without seeing Rocky One because you don't get the whole story of where she came from. Of course all. you do. They and do Mickey. the little recap at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. See, spoiler alert. I didn't like that Rocky lost in Rocky One. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> it's only forty years old. <laughs> right. <laughs> I saw it in the movie. You left the theater disappointed that he didn't win. Yeah. I'm like, all right, that sucked. And then at least in two, he wins. Yeah. Spoiler. You got any movie to go with this, Ed Sullivan? It's it's almost you know like some sort of silly romantic. Th- what was that one that Jonathan likes? Summersby. Oh God, so. Yeah, Summersby. Nah, not, no romantic see, comedy. Taste, I, that tasted like disappointment. I got. <laughs> I, so I started gotta, watching that. I fell asleep about twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. In. I got to go with my Apple theme, and I'm going. And my brother, who's in the audience, Sammy B, will appreciate this. American Pie. Apple Dumpling Gang. <laughs> I don't. I never saw it. Oh, it's a Don Knotts movie with Tim Conway. Oh, it's, really? <laughs> it's a riot. One of the Disney movies from when we were yeah. kids. Okay, I don't know that. So, um, you know, there's a podcast out there. I, I think he's actually stopped doing it. Um, Dave Burke. Burke, yeah, which is uh, Cigar Jukebox. I always enjoyed it anyway. Yeah. He had me on a bunch of times. And he peers 
cigars with music, which is very interesting. So if you were going to smoke the cigar and you're going to sit outside and listen to some, to some type of music, what type of music are you listening to with this? And Rudy is going to appreciate this, and, and uh, maybe Skip will. I'm going to go with the song Low by Flo Rida. Low Rider? Flo Rida is the guy's name. Okay. The yeah. song is called Low because in the first round of lyrics, he says, Apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. So I'm keeping my Apple theme. Well, I actually know the song you're talking about. I've gone straight apples across the board. I win. No. What kind of music is that? That's what the hell did you win? Uh, hip hop. Yeah, hip hop. This is not a hip hop no, type of thing. No, this is like some salsa or merengue. Uh, a little bit of a Latin flair to it, with a, with a little pepper, a little, little, little yeah. juiced up. Type or of you know, salt and pepper. You know, push oh, it salt. real good. Yeah, <laughs> Jonathan no likes salt it when somebody uh, pushes it real good. He does. He does. So, is there certain cigars that go with certain type of music? Um, if you were, to, you pick a cigar and you say, well, "I'm going to listen to reggae now," and now you go into the cigar store and you're going to go home and listen to some reggae. Yeah, well, you smoke upsetters. the upsetters. Obviously. The upsetter, <laughs> slam, which I, which slam you, dunk, right? <laughs> Anything else that would be the cigar to go along with that? Or it's too easy. It's that one's too easy. It has a Jamaican tobacco. I would actually do it. it. I would actually do it if I was if I was in the mood to, to listen to reggae, which I never am. Mm. I would I would have to do it. I would have to do that. That's a good one. Yeah, I listened to a little redemption song last night. It was a good time. Yeah, yeah. Bar Marley. Yeah, yeah. The. I don't know. I, for some reason, I see a reggae song as a strong cigar, full-bodied, like a it depends on the Neanderthal style. type of. But it depends on the on the style of reggae. You know, you got like faster beat reggae, which has more of a ska feel to it, which kind of has its origins. Yeah. In oh, reggae. So this is the chill out. This boom, is boom, boom. the get stoned, yeah. chill out, relaxed reggae. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the idea of what we're talking about. It's always a good about. thing when you tell your boss get stoned, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I disagree. <laughs> All right, let's get to the matchup of the week right now. The matchup of the week is brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it really stands for Victor Sinclair. It's Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? Which one are you going to pick? And today is get hit in the head by a professional baseball pitch versus okay. an amateur golfer. Hitting your head with the with the golf, golf ball. ball. Do I get to wear a helmet? You can wear a helmet. We don't want to. All right. Yeah. So are you wearing a helmet. With, are you getting with the, with the golf ball on the way up or on the way down? Because <laughs> the exit velocity is a lot harder than the What's entry that? velocity. I disagree. What, I, what, what, when what it comes off the guy's club, it's going it's going fast. Probably a hundred miles an hour. When it's starting to come down, it has slowed down. The, yes, you, you just said it wrong the first time. Uh, no, you I'm, heard it wrong. Whatever. I'm thinking I'm going golf ball for the simple reason. So both of them is going to be, so it's the baseball pitcher, so it's you're at the plate, so that's when it's going to hit you in the head, right? What is that, 90 feet? 90, like, yeah. 60 feet, 6 inches. I think it's 90. No, first, second, third home is 90 feet oh. between the bases. It's 60 it, feet, 6 inches. You know inches. entirely too much about But he's sports. a pro, but the, the amateur the little golfer league? is where the ball was going to land. It's going to hit you in the head. I'll take the golfer. I'm taking the golf ball but no matter where it is in the arc because the mass of the golf ball, I think me and my helmet would be able to withstand it. And I'm going full face shot right in the front. Boom! I want to see it coming. Yeah. Golf so the, how would the helmets protect you? Your face is open. The helmet only protects the crown. Hitting the head. Maybe, hitting the head. maybe because you're wearing one of those skull caps that the bikers wear. I'm wearing a full-faced hockey helmet with a small grill. That's cheating. The bikers just chimed in. They don't wear the helmets, bikers. so <laughs> that's right. Because they're in New Hampshire, you don't have to. You have to live for your diet, that's, baby. That's right. We wouldn't want to mess up that luscious mane of yours, Damon. No, no helmet law. And I'm taking a Tim Wakefield knuckleball to the head. Ah, All slower right. velocity pitch. Yeah. All right. Hey, his fastball barely hit 80 miles an hour. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you could even take a Wakefield fastball. Yeah. Right? But baseball, it, it can kill you. Baseball can, in the head can kill you, even with the helmet on. Can a golf ball coming down hit you? I'm sure if it hits you in the right spot, it can. When it hits hits the plate, it's 100 miles an hour. My sister-in-law has been hit in the face with a golf ball. Depending on the pitcher. But yeah. Yes. 
So how about the golf ball coming down? I think it's not much coming it's down. not much. Can't yeah. be 100 miles an hour. All right, so I'm going to take the golf ball, too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, but that that's pretty obvious, I guess. Okay. Uh, so what cigar goes perfectly with what? Um, he just had a baby. Uh, I didn't ask him what cigar he lit. I imagine it's going to be a Balmoral, so he blended it. Yeah. But uh, if you were having a baby girl, what are you what are you uh, celebrating with? If I have a baby girl, I'm going with <coughs> my brother's favorite, which is uh, Fleur de Lorraine. Okay, because it's a girl's name. Girl's name. Thing. We're French Canadian. It sounds French. And I, I, I have with. to go with La Giana because that's what I that's did. That's what you did. <laughs> that's what I did. So I I can't. Fake See, idea. I'm thinking crown heads because the baby's head crowns. Oh, God. <laughs> it's crowned out. That's good. That's good. That is not good. Do it not is encourage good. him. <laughs> yeah. That's where Are I'm you looking drinking? To... What's in your cup? That's where I'm looking to go here. It's... It, it makes sense. He gave, gave some thought to that. Uh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so he puts the ash right in his drink, Sammy B. <laughs> <laughs> And then he puts it in his drink, and he drinks it. That's the rules. And, and, and this is and this is the guy that wouldn't have what some sort of Twinkie or something. He wouldn't. Won't have a Twinkie. He'll eat a urinal cake, and yeah. evidently, ash and water. See if I if I paid him to do it, he wouldn't do it. No, because his brother did it to him. But then the payback happens. So what do you get? A little crunch? It's salty. Yeah. <laughs> Ed, you, you had a baby girl, Ed Sullivan. What did, would you would you would you smoke after the baby was born? Do you remember? Whew, I don't recall what the cigar was because I had bands made. With oh, really? Her, her name on it. And you don't remember what cigar it was? Done? It wasn't a great one. So I smoked something good for myself. And Do you remember these what? These were the giveaway All ones. All right. Do you remember what? Well, this would have been twenty-one years ago. Yeah. So I would have been in a Cuban phase. Ah, so you smoked a Cuban cigar. Yeah, my guess would be uh, Partagas Lusitania. Really? Nice nice choice. Yeah. Nice choice. How about uh, if it was a baby boy? Does that change things? Well, it I does. Would, I would go Jewish State because it's the rebirth of cigar. Oh. <laughs> See where he wow. goes? You, Barry did the right thing. Barry this did is what homework. I was looking for. I'm just a cigar smoker. I'm not trying to make some sort of weird combination here. No. He, if you I have you a, wouldn't ever want to make a weird combination. No. Fruit strike gum. If with, I had a boy. With chocolate pudding on it. Or that something. would be the ultimate gift to the world. Passing my genes along to the next generation. Yeah. So I would smoke my favorite cigar, which is the Byron Grand Poema. All right. Um, I have the Aganosa leaf, um, and I'll tell you, you actually handed me one today, and on it is the guy holding the um, bunch of tobacco leaves, yes. making like a muscle. Yes. And you want a, a child, you want to may your first child be a masculine child. You know what that comes from? No. It's the godfather. I could have probably guessed that. <laughs> May your first child be a masculine child. So it seems masculine to me. Um, heavy metal music. What are you smoking? Barry, you are a heavy metal fan. Yeah, uh, but I'm thinking we're going to include some certain genres of rock. And being the kid rock buys his cigars at Two Guys Cigars. Yeah. And he smoked short stories. Yeah. So I'm going to have a short story. All right. Because it's it goes kid right. rock. But he's not heavy metal. He's not heavy metal, but that's the tie-in yeah. I'm going with. Yeah. Um, my brother has been known to play heavy metal. Really? And uh, when I go to his house, I like to smoke something that I like. And I'm a big fan right now of the Aladino Corojo Reserve. Gives me something to do while I suffer through the agonizing heavy metal that's going on. So I can have my enjoyment and he can have his enjoyment. Yeah, you're all wrong. Anything, Ed? You gotta... Well, I need a strong cigar. So I, I would go with what you went for for the reggae. Something right. like a Neanderthal, you know, something with some oomph to it. Yeah, the answer is Rough Rider. Hmm. And it's a sweet tip, and it's got the skull on it. And that's how I envision. Um, so you go into a heavy, heavy metal, metal show, and you're going to smoke the wimpiest cigar. <laughs> it's not that it's a wimpy cigar. It looks like it's a tough, but it's really not. It looks tough, and it's really not. My brother looks tough. He's tough. <laughs> I don't see him as a heavy metal guy. I've heard you play a bunch of times, but heavy metal, huh? I'd like to hear that. I'd like to hear that. How about Careful jazz? Careful what you wish for. Jazz, there's only one answer on this. <laughs> there's only one answer on this. Yeah. Pure soul. 
Oh, that's a good one. That's not the one yeah, I had. Robert Wright, saxophone player. Oh, pure soul. Right. I went with Avo. Okay. Okay, that works. That yeah. makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I've done it. I've listened to jazz and smoked an Avo. And a good name for a jazz album would be King's Treasure. So King's Treasure works. Okay. I went with uh, the Tiano by the Serenos because there's some subtlety to that. In order to appreciate jazz, you need to appreciate subtlety. I went with real cigars. Good. <laughs> Good. No. Opera. There's only one for that. Oh, yeah. I, I got Aging that. Room, Connecticut. Yeah. Aging Room. <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong. I, I went with a... That's, uh, the easy, that's the easy thing hanging right there, yeah. but go ahead. Maybe you got I it. I went with a Perdomo small batch half Corona because it won't take long to smoke it and I can turn off the opera music. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Tabernacle. Mm. Why is tabernacle? That, why is that the answer? The tabernacle um, choir. orchestra. The tabernacle. The Grace choir. Tabernacle Choir. Yeah, or the Mormon. That's more like chamber choir. music. That is horrible. <laughs> horrible. I don't even think you understand how this game is played. <laughs> but I you made it up. I invented it. And, so. it. and when it comes to what you're smoking, when what you're doing with what you're doing, if you're doing your taxes, you would smoke Perdomo Twentieth Sun Grown because. He cut out the S chip tax. <laughs> See, that's if you're going to make a go. comparison. What if you had twins instead of a boy or a girl? You had twins. The uh, the acid dos uh, amigos mm, or fratello. Yeah, they'd have to be boys. Right. I guess if you had twin boys. You okay. Can... All right. How about disco music? Listen to the disco music. You didn't have that on the list. I don't. I'm throwing some out there. <laughs> disco music. I got the answer. Studio 21. That's it. Yep. <laughs> I just had to think like Dave for a there second. We go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so you uh, you survived you, an accident, a car crash. Okay. And uh, you might have a slight concussion, but not really bad. This one's easy. So now you gotta you gotta pick the right cigar for chromagnon cranium. Ooh. Cranium. See, spell. I was thinking from a medical standpoint, perhaps you shouldn't be sucking on anything too large. So I went with La Galera, the cubes, Connecticut. Nice and mild. You're just checking yourself out. Going easy. I'm going with the Agonosa signature. Of you can't have something too strong, and it's it's got wow. some taste and stuff. I had the same one. There we go. It must be right. It must be right. That's what I would say. What if you were stuck in traffic? What does that mean? What if you're stuck in traffic? So that's why we went with the smaller cigar? No. Maybe I just the, said, what the if you're stuck cigar. in traffic, I was going with the Agonorsa Leaf Signature. Oh, perfect cigar. For I would have gone with a digger. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the home team wins. Well, it we, happens here all the time. It just happened. Just so happened. What did you smoke? I was over somebody's house. I smoked a Padron, but not the 50 that they all smoked, mm -hmm. but I was smoking a Padron. I think it just it was a 1964 uh, it, something. Knowing where you were, it was the Soberano, because I know who you <laughs> okay. were hanging with. Okay. That's, what, that's what you smoked. That's what it was. So you got to go Boston Strong. you got to go Big Poppy. Baseball? Yeah. <laughs> Still but New they, England. Yeah. I'm going Padron 50th, the hammer, jo myself. Jonathan knows what I smoked because I think I bought you one that yes, day, you did. too, to celebrate. Yes, that you did. That was the Byron Grant poem. Uh, so celebration cigar that somebody else won. What if you won an award? But we have, Everybody says we won. You know, we didn't have anything, <laughs> we to, <won. laughs> we didn't have anything to do with it. But we played Let's assume defense. you won or you, you got... Um, uh, a raise, or you got promoted, or you got the job you were looking to get. You're jumping into the next hour? Whatever. It's out of Because it, that's what happened. It's, yeah, that's what happened for me. Right. And Irish Mike Rachel, who watches our show and he's our resident heavy metal fan, said the heavy metal cigar is pissed off Kristoff. Oh, that's, ah, that's, that's a good solid. one. Yeah. Heavy metal people seem pissed off to me. Although it's maybe, actually uh, nailed it. Maybe that's, that's actually very good. The punk rock cigar, because they always seem very pissed yeah. off. Yeah. What question are we on? <laughs> I, uh, we were in the home team winning, uh, but let's go to uh, Backyard Barbecue. Now, Backyard Barbecue, it's really, it's two from the same line. This hat's it's this perfect hat. that Jim Price is here, our rep for yeah. Aroa. Yeah. Because my Backyard Barbecue cigar is, 
I go with the first 20, and it's the fuller bodied one first, the darker one, the original, and then it's the Colorado uh, shade one. Now, you're on the after. sales floor. Do people come in and say, Oh, I'm having a barbecue, blah, blah, blah. What cigar should I get? Because you, you typically, I would say, you want to get backyard barbecue cigars. Right. So you want extra cigars for the other people there because it never ceased to happen to me that Somebody I'm at a barbecue and I got a cigar or something and I get away from the crowd or something. I light a cigar and they come over and say, oh, cigar smoker, huh? you got another one? And Of course you got to have another yeah, one. Yeah, have another one, have... Yeah, I brought the box. See, Here it is. My thinking was similar to yours. Yeah. I, I went Toscano, right? Because really, oh, why not? They're hardy. You know, you're outdoors. And, and that jackass who didn't bring his own cigars to the party, if you only had one, you could cut it in half and give him the part that hasn't been in your mouth and say, here, finish this. Finish this. Yeah. And I'll smoke the other half. That's pretty good. You can distribute them, you know. They're... If they're too strong, though, there's people that, these people that are coming over to you at the barbecue, they don't even Here's smoke cigars. He asked me for the cigar, not the other way and around. It doesn't matter how strong they are. People always come ask you. You could give them the mildest one. They're going to take two puffs off yeah. it and put it down. That's what happens. It so gives me off so badly. Give them half a cigar. <laughs> you know, you know, less investment. Well, the next question was, if, if you're having pizza and you're smoking cigars, you're outside, you ordered a pizza or something, this, what, what are you doing? I'd say you have a Toscano with your pizza. See, I would have gotten pizza's Italian food, so a Garofalo because it ends in a vowel. Well, just because <laughs> it ends in a vowel? <laughs> I'd probably go Cuesta La Vida because the band had a little Italian theme to it. Yeah. All right. Skip the best one. What do you got? What about after a dump? Oh, oh. God. I thought he was avoiding <laughs> that one. That's in our show notes. Yeah. I, got, I, got, I got quite a few for that one. Yeah, I didn't actually have an answer for it. That's <laughs> Thomas Jefferson deuces. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Illusion number two. Monte Cristo Anything, number Mon two. Monte Cristo number two, right? Yeah, my, mine's more involved than that. I went sober Mesa because I ate a lot. I went and took a dump, washed my hands, <laughs> and now I'm gonna go have my cigar after dinner. All right. So say say you're prepping for a colonoscopy. <laughs> so it's it's the day before, right? Yeah. What do you smoke, Mr. Jonathan? You should be able to nail this if you if you're connecting with me at all. I'm not connecting with you. I'm refusing <laughs> to connect with you. Come on, there's one answer for this. You're prepping for the prepping colonoscopy. For the colonoscopy. This is not. This is the day before, and you gotta and you gotta eliminate everything. I guess washing, said, cleaning your system, dose. Ombre? No. It's, it's, <laughs> it's La Flor Dominicana chisel. I see where you're going with that. <laughs> and, and you want the... You don't have to drink the high liquid. Nic yeah. High nicotine. You're right. You, you don't, don't have, have to, to drink the liquid. Because I'll tell you, we, we smoked that cigar, and there's two bathrooms here, thank God, because both of us have <laughs> We're to We're texting go. each other. How oh is yours God. going? Right. Right. Um, TMI. And then after the colonoscopy, where do you go from there? The colonoscopy is over. It's successful. They got everything. There's nothing wrong with you. Congratulations. And now you're going to have a cigar. What are you going to smoke after the colonoscopy? Just, is anybody I left object, listening to the show? I object to this line of questioning. Sublime. Sublime. Oh, he likes the 2283 sublime size. I guess, I guess I'm in on that. I would say you got to go something mild. Look at he just Thanks, walks, buddy. Up, walks up here. He just walks up. He's very comfortable. Yeah. Here. Put him on the in, show it, one time. It and runs in just... the family. My grandfather used to do the same well, thing. There we go. He, he did build the set, so he, he needs did. to check on it now and then. There we go. It's still level. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> what, what do you have after the colonoscopy? I say you got to go light. You got to go something mild, easy. I'm sticking with my 2283 answer. You go with the La Galera Cube Short ah, that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's soft and easy, and it's small, and yeah. you just you just went through through something. Maybe Some you trauma. enjoyed it, but most people <laughs> didn't have a good time during it, and you go easy on it. No? I guess. All right. You think we're done with this? I hope we're done with we're this. We're not I done. Think there's more this in the is next worse hour. than this. <laughs> there's more coming up and, and some thought-provoking ones coming up. But this is worse than the ones that my brother, my, the kid that my brother is feuding with. His yeah. idea of pairing it with movies. This your, is worse. Your thoughts on the Balmoral, Connecticut, Rothschild? This was a contender for the Cigar of the Year. Okay. Very we deserving. We didn't bring it up to them. It, yeah. 
and, and people who didn't have it, you know, I never had that before, and they get the contenders pack. That was a grand slam. That yes, pack. it was. Everything was good in that pack. Some people said, I never heard of this, I never heard of the other one, and whatever, and they have it and say it's great. And that's why it's important to smoke every single cigar in there before you vote, because you wouldn't, oh, Connecticut, I don't like Connecticut. Smoke the damn cigar. Oh, my God, it was really good. It didn't taste like a Connecticut, because it doesn't, right? Correct. But I still taste some pepper. I still get that fruity, there's a, cherry. There's a candied apple thing going mm. on. What a nice cigar. Good job, Francisco. Very good. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more perfect pairings. God. And an awesome lineup coming for the Cigar Authority. We actually have some Since content coming Since The Godfather's up. your favorite movie, yeah. collectively, I'll be back. I'll be back. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary, 
Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at better cigar shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa Tobacco Farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. Hola, soy Manuel Inoa from La Aurora, Dominican Republic. You are listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcasts Network. And we are back with our number two broadcasting live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe and uh, just wrapping up the Balmoral Cigar. Very, very good. Uh, those that are in the care package ended up trying it. Uh, I, I bet they're surprised of um, not what they thought it was going to be. The feedback in the chat room has been uh, extremely positive on the cigar. Yeah, probably something a Connecticut guy would never try. Yeah. So that's the good thing about the care package. You're going to try something maybe you wouldn't, and you're going to be surprised. Here's something that um, I got a sample a long, long time ago, but it was actually, um, um, I, I don't know who, was, somebody ended up pushing me towards getting this, and, and I don't even remember what it tastes like or anything, but what, what is this cigar, Barry? Help me out here. Well, today's second cigar is the Patina Habano, and it's manufactured in Nicaragua. We're going to smoke different sizes on the panel from the Robusto at 5x52, Corona 6x46, and the Toro at 6x52. It features an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper over Pennsylvania binder with fillers from Nicaragua and Pennsylvania. A single cigar will range from $8.99 to $11.99, while a box of 16 is $128.79 to $171.99, which is a savings of roughly 11% on the boxes at TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, GuysCigars.com. This is a li little brand I know very little about. It's made in uh, Granada, Nicaragua. It comes out of Casa Favelli, which is the name of the factory. Okay. Uh, the factory also produces a, a brand called Mabacho. Oh, all right. And the sales manager, Mo Molly, is the person that created this cigar and sells it separately from the company he works for. All right. Okay, we have uh, every size here. What do you want? The only one I haven't smoked is the Corona. So if I could smoke that. All right. The, the right, you see Ecuadorian rabbit does not look like an Ecuadorian. It's toothy. It's dark. Yep. It's oily. Ecuadorian Habano. Ed Sullivan, he wants the other Corona I brought to. I, I knew, the, knew that, that's where you were going to go there. So you got the uh, a Robusto and a whatever this is. I have yet to smoke the Toro, and if you wouldn't right. mind, I'll take okay. that one. Leaves me the Robusto. I like a Robusto to try try a blend. Beautiful. The wrapper is gorgeous looking. Uh, just surprising that that's what it is. I'd never look at this and say Ecuador. 
No, right? no, definitely I agree with that. Uh, a lot of oils to the wrapper. Yeah. Boy, seamless as can be. Yeah, beautiful. A, a th- beautiful th- looking. A thin network of veins, nothing to really distract, yeah. detract from the beauty of the wrapper. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous looking. Network of veins. There we go. Network. Sometimes you do surprise me with your turn of phrase, parents. <laughs> the roadmap of veininess. Uh, patina. Patino? Patina. P-A-T-I-N-A. P-A-T-I-N-A. Patina. Yep. In a script. Um, nice looking. Okay, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands are raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Now, I want to not only taste it, I want to smell this. Do you know where the patina is? The patina of in, al- in alcohol? It's a green or brown film that surfaces on bronze or similar That's right. metals. That's right. It's produced by oxidation over a long period. So I had a real expensive coin that I had saved a long time. And it was in, like, unbelievable quality, but it had turned all kind of brown color. So I got um, baking pow- baking soda, uh, baking powder, baking soda, whatever baking it was. Baking soda, probably. And I rubbed it with a thing, and I made it crystal clean and beautiful. And I, I was a kid, and I made it so nice, and it was a coin shop, and I brought it into the coin shop, and he goes, what did you do to this thing? And I was so proud. It was like it came out of the mint, and it was a 100-year-old coin. And he goes, you ruined it. <laughs> this is worthless now because you actually took the patine off off it. And I said, what do you mean? And he says, no, you can't. you got to leave it the way it is, and you ruined it. Don't do this to the coins. And the guy throws it back to me, and I'm like, oh, my God. So I got the coin. I was probably eight years old, and I put it in a potted plant in my house. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to leave it there for 10 years or whatever. We moved twice. I have no idea whatever happened to it. Someday somebody's going to find this thing. I stuck it in a potted plant to actually speed it up or make it get old faster or whatever. And uh, that's, that's something my, seriously wrong. That's with true. You. It was, that was eight year old Dave. Now I would put it in a, in a little a pan of dirt on my desk. Well, nowadays you wouldn't be walking into a coin shop to sell it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you would hold on to it, but don't do that. Don't take the patine off of things that off take coins. Yeah. I don't know about other things, but a little molasses going on in the cold. I wonder draw. why they called it that. Patina. No clue. For, don't know the origin of the word. Yeah. We could find out. But I get uh, the cold drawer for me reminds me of a uh, brownie. A brownie. Well, yeah. Not far off. I'm sticking with my molasses. <clears throat> We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Commissioner. The Vertigo Commissioner features single action, dual jets, a flip out bullet punch, and the patented Vertigo big ass tank, all for the low price of twenty nine ninety nine. That's the Vertigo Commissioner. Very firm roll on this too. Mm-hmm. Packed like maybe it's gonna be tight, and I'm telling you that now because it's not tight. So the origin of the word is Latin and it comes from the eighteenth century and it uh patina has roots of shallow and dish. What was the um, breakfast thing you'd have with the... Polenta? No, polenta. No, it's like polina. <laughs> I have no idea where you're going with this, buddy. There was a like a breakfast, like Mapo. Remember Mapo? Was no. it called Farina? Maybe? Farina, maybe? No. Farina? <laughs> Patina, Farina. Yeah, it was like gruel, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Porridge. I went to you because it's poor people food. <laughs> and Ed Sullivan picked it up, which he well, won't even eat, eat, eat a meatball. It might be food. old people food. Is it might, it is it old people food, right? Farina. Yeah. Fortified Farina Creamy Hot Series. Mm. It was. Uh, I liked it. They still make it? I think so. What is this the friggin' snack authority? <laughs> Two of you geeking it's not, out it's, on. It's not a snack, but it would go perfect with this cigar. No, anything that you eat between meals is a snack. That's why I think that the premise of your show is ridiculous. Anything you eat between meals is a snack. So you could have anything on there. You could have cold pizza. That's a snack. Sushi. I wouldn't have sushi. It's raw and it's uncooked and it doesn't make any sense. Now, Dave, just what a nice cigar this partly is. Partly because it'll bother Jonathan. Uh, cream of wheat is farina. Okay. 
So cream of wheat. You know what cream of wheat is? Yes. All right. We were poor, and we ate poor people food. All right. Did I take a nap? Did we? Did the <laughs> we Perdomo transitioned. Co- the Perdomo commercial. I thought the same thing, but I do remember doing the cutting thing. So oh, yeah, okay. we're good. We're good. We did it. You were sleeping. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jonathan forgot to whisper. You're, you're drunk from the colonoscopy uh, from the last episode. Do you ever have a colonoscopy? No. Really? No. They look at me and they go, I, yeah, you could wait a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> they actually you're, don't want to do it. Clearly the picture of health. <laughs> um, when, they, when you do go for the colonoscopy, they give you a drug, and it's that Michael Jackson drug right. that you actually forget what just happened. So there's a big uh, thing of coiled up um, hose that stand in there that you have no idea with. That's going in you, by the way. And there it is coiled up, and they give you the shot or whatever. This is and riveting. They, and then you're wide awake while supposedly this happens, and this coiled up tube goes inside through, through your butt and all the way up. And then and the next it, thing you know, you wake up, the, and the coil's all messed up on the ground, and they said, okay, you're all set. And you're looking at the coil, and that was just in you, and you have no idea. You totally forgot about it. Admit it, Jonathan. That turned you on a little bit. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you now? 41. 40. Could do a 40. I think they're saying 50 now. Yeah. I did think of a good cigar, and, and uh, our biker buddy Damon over here mentioned it. Uh, if you go in for the big snip, you're done having kids. Okay. And the frozen peas, all yeah. that's happening. Did you do that? No. That would be C.O. Jones, Cajones. Cajones, yeah. There's a, there's a Dave one for you. All right. That's making a connection. Uh, we have all the time. They, they come in here and ask for graduation cigars, which they're, they're fighting right now here in New Hampshire for the uh, raise the rate from 18 to 21. Mm-hmm. We're making a big push for that not to happen. And go on to ipcpr.org. You see New Hampshire. Yeah. And if you live in New Hampshire, go on there and say, don't do this. Um, Part of the thing is you got military guys at 18 years old. You can vote at 18. You can do You work. are an adult at 18. And you can't make a decision if you want a cigar or not. It's crazy. It's nuts. And, and oh, it's not going to be a big deal. How many 18, 19, 20-year-olds end up coming to the store? Not very many. But that's not the point. The point is you look at somebody like Hawaii that is 21, and now they're looking at 30. And then so you can't le- let their foot go in the door. They have a legislator that proposed 100. Yeah. So that's what ends up happening. You can't let them have an inch because that that they'll out, they'll wear you out. I mean, it started in Massachusetts at a 12% tobacco tax, and I ended up leaving the state at 12% because I knew what was going to happen. 12 turned into 15, turned into 20, turned into 30, turned into 40, and now they want even more. And because they're not making the money, and they say, okay, we're going to just keep going. Make it 100% because 100% times zero. zero becomes zero. So stop it. And all they did is put people out of business. So don't let them take the 18. Fight it. Oh, you know, you got to choose your battles. I hear from some people that say it. Fight every single one of them. Fight and lose if, if you end up losing. But at least go down fighting, right? Fight. Mm. Fight back. So, which takes me to graduation, and we see it that happens, that these kids aren't into cigars or anything, but it's graduation, and they're going to have a cigar after for pitches, for pitches, to take a picture and all that stuff. High school graduation, you're 18 years old, I what can, do you turn them on to? I can tell you uh, we're coming close to graduation season right now. Mm-hmm. The big hit last year was the Dos Ombre Emperor at 11 by 90 <laughs> because it was for the picture. Correct. You can see it's a cigar. They would take two puffs and throw it away. It wasn't an expensive one, but yeah. that was the big hit for... A giant cigar, and I believe it should be a big cigar. Now, when you go to college, maybe it's different. Now you're older and it's more sophisticated and you get to something my choice would be like a Davidoff or something. Sure. You know, get the double R or something like that for the pitcher. It's a well-known cigar. Yeah. This pitcher's going to carry on for years and years. Second but- second place, by the way, and, and Jim's reminding me of it here, being here, is the 7x70 Ogre, green and, and black ah, striped. Really good, good stood one out for high school. Yes, on good. the picture. Almost cartoony looking. Yeah. Right? It's a, and a I agree photo with those one. are a little bit milder, even the Asylum Connecticut 7x70, but by name, Diploma. Ah. Is the cigar. <laughs> mm. You've been hanging around with him too much. 
But you get, that's the idea. That's why you have these notes in, in, into you in advance. Right now, let's find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And in the city of Beverly Hills, a proposal has been discussed that would ban all tobaccos in the 90210. You can add more states to the Tobacco 21 movement as Maryland, Utah, and West Virginia have proposed new bills. And this week, a bipartisan bill was introduced that would lift the Cuban embargo. Mm. However, any chance of that passing probably went out the window when Cuba stood with Venezuela at the UN about U.S. bullying of the socialist country. Uh, Jesse Flores, who headed up the subculture studios for Drew Estate, has left the company to pursue other business ventures. That's the oddest guy, right? Yes, yeah. yep. And then at TPE in Las Vegas, the Tobacco Business Awards were handed out. My friend Nesta Miranda was given the Legacy Award. Yay. And then a head scratcher, Michael Herklotz of Altria, Nat Sherman, received the Entrepreneur Award. And an entrepreneur is defined as a person who organizes and operates a business, taking on a greater financial risk in order to do so. And he works. He doesn't for, own the company. No. What financial risk is he taking? I, I would love him to own the company. It means he yeah. would own Philip Morris. I mean, it's Altria. <laughs> Wouldn't that be? That's interesting. Yeah, that's, it made me scratch my head, and that's what's up in the cigar industry. All right, we got a lot of stuff coming up on the Cigar Authority. Um, next week, we are going to do the blind spice off, where we're going to actually smell the spices and see if we can pick up what the spices are. Uh, and guess by the smells of it. With us on the show is going to be Officer Mike. Mike is a new rep in the cigar industry. He's a police officer by day. Well, he must be a police officer by night because you've got to be a rep in the day, right? And he's a rep for um, Rocky Patel in the daytime. And uh, he's, I guess he's got a year or so left after all these years as a police officer. But um, he loves cigars and he wants to get in the cigar business. And uh, that's what he did. So we're going to bring him on. And um, that'll be next week. The following week, March 2nd. Happy birthday to Barry, turning 50 years old, ready for his colonoscopy. And uh, we're going to yay. have... Yay. <laughs> That's what you're getting from me, is the colonoscopy. Are and, you going to uh, do it personally? No. no. <laughs> but I got the perfect cigar to pair for it. And um, Brad Winstead, he is the head of marketing of Premium Cigars for Altadas, will join us live. He's, he's uh, flying up to come, come there uh, to the show. And we'll smoke the Monte Cristo Nicaraguan, which was a very interesting cigar that I tasted when I was in in Dominican. Rafael Nadell did the blind taste test of all the um, Monte, Cristos. Monte Cristos, including Cuban. And I thought I was going to nail it. You know, I got this no problem. And he's looking at me as I would do it. And this cigar, Monte Cristo Nicaraguan, is the one I thought was the Cuban. And it was the Monte Cristo Nicaraguan. Um, in March 9th, uh, Mr. Jonathan and Barry without a paddle. Me and Ed Sullivan are going away, and you guys got the show. That's it. You too. You're the producer. You're the everything. I'm, I'm... So this is called the train wreck. <laughs> if anything can go wrong, it will. You've got to produce it, and you've got to do the show, because we're on this 500 kick. We can't miss a show, and me and Ed are away. Ed Sullivan and I rewired the board so that it can come up on the stage with us. And so uh, we'll be we'll be prepared. And who's going to be the producer? Barry is. Really? I can't do everything. I can't throw the ball and catch the ball. So <laughs> he's going to be the producer. If anybody knows how to play with balls, it there we go. It would be you. <laughs> and um, March sixteenth, Skip Martin from Romacraft is coming mm -hmm. up. So we'll have him live in studio on March 16th. And uh, right after the show, I leave for TAA. So the following week, I'll be back from TAA, and uh, we'll go from there. March 30th is the Sky Authority's ninth anniversary. And joining us is Terrence O'Reilly, uh, which is the Cigar of the Year, no. the Aganos Leaf. No. no. Oh. This is Terrence O'Reilly. But it's right near St. Patrick's Day, so. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Good, quick comeback. Huh? Save. Catching a save. Terrence Riley, I'm sorry. From Aganosa Leaf. 
uh, for the ninth anniversary and we'll be uh, coming close to that 500 episode coming up. And as I promised, we will uh, do 501 episodes after that. I don't know. So uh, we'll see what happens. So that's what's coming up. Uh, perfect pairing for chocolate. Only one comes to mind. Me yep, too. Same here. Same here. And that is the Padron 1964 Toro Maduro. Got it. See, I was thinking. Everybody? Yeah, was, you got to go Padron. It I was, tastes like chocolate. I was thinking Java. Really? The chocolate infused It cigar. does. It does. Mm. Because it's infused with yeah. it. It's really there. Isn't it funny? I can taste chocolate. Do you taste chocolate in this? Is it because I'm talking no, about there's, it? But there's, there's a, a brownie component to this. You want some brownie, right? Yeah. So I got graham cracker, chocolate, and espresso. This is the patina. I am, by the way, shocked at how good this cigar it's is. It's very good. I did not expect... I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect this. And this no. is this is my third one this week, and it's my first time smoking the Corona. And a after smoking them all, I, I got to say the Corona is the winner. This is my first one I'm smoking, so I didn't try that size. The Robusto. Holy mackerel. Yeah, I've been smoking the Coronas and the Robustos. Uh, Corona probably has a little bit more strength to it. Uh, the flavors are similar between the two. However, I find the Toro to be uh, a little bit milder. That's impossible. Have you, have, have you smoked much of Mombacho's brands, uh, what they make? I had a couple of reps on the sample. Uh, the rep leave a couple of samples. They were probably for me, and I never had them, so I have no idea. <laughs> what this is the first time I'm trying it. It's really good. <laughs> touching my bell. Now, Did we ever talk about that? Dave, you said graham cracker and chocolate. If it and only had and, an espresso. Any marshmallow? It could be s'mores. No, no marshmallow. No marshmallow. Not yet. Too bad. Now the pairing. Look how nice the the burn is. I mean, this is. I would pair. I don't know this anything about this, but this is very good. A Delmonico steak mm. taken to straight medium, and you can do that. I can. Yeah. And I would take. I would. I would take some of the steak juice, and I would make a hot and dirty martini with it. So I would have a steak juice infused hot and dirty martini to pair with it, and I'd huh. be in heaven. Yeah, it's too much. Well, of, too much of that. Um, juice from the no olives. such thing no Food. such thing is too much food wise there's only one thing that goes with every cigar right have you ever put oh, butter what on a pop tart the? it's so freaking good it would be have very good butter on a pop tart if you haven't then i think you should i don't think it tastes like butter on a pop tart but no, it would go it would perfect go. with it complimentary it would be complimentary and you agree did, you've had it, right? I've had butter on a pop tart. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> of course, it hasn't changed my life like it did for you and Ed Sullivan. Oh, I didn't Playing know you that could drop do it every week. But I didn't know you could do it. And then when I finally had it, I'm like, wow, is that really good? I and do, now I, I don't I, want it without. I would no, like to, to give a shout out to my buddy Mike Perry, who's in a, a yes. live studio audience, and he came up with his friends. Is it Queensberry? Queensberry, Queensberry yes. Tobacco. Yeah. Yeah, shop. came up. It's awesome to see them. Uh, check them out. They do some awesome events. There's, there's, there's a retailer that gets it yep. and knows how to do make an experience. I want to go up there myself. I mean, some of these things. They're the ones that did the rep roast. I think we talked about it. Yes. Before. Great. Oliver was roasted. Oliver got They all did. They oh, roasted okay. all of them, which is fantastic. I wish I thought of it. That's, That's great. a great idea. And they all deserve what they got. <laughs> and then some. And I, I heard some of them, and they and they they got what they they got what they should have got. And I, I I asked a lot of questions because I was very interested in. Um, perfect pairing for a divorce. Another easy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, Jeff Bezos could have one. Uh, me, Kaida, my mistress. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. See, I I was not where I went. I was going dos hombre because I'm not going to have any money, and it's a good cigar for the price. It depends if this turned out to be a good thing. Sometimes the divorce is a good thing that ends up happening. You want to celebrate. It's an expensive thing. If my wife and I get divorced, we end up leaving with half of everything, and we had our own money going in. We would have our own money going out, but I would be lonely. So I would smoke the Acid Amigos, and I'd have my, my little Amigo ashtray, and I'd have two going at once, and I'd just be amused by the smoke coming out of his mouth, and that would help me feel that like I'm, I've got a friend. Profoundly See? sad. Yeah, it sounds like you got divorced and you weren't happy about it. I, I went the, be happy. I went the other way and imagined I would be happy. Not that I want to be divorced. I don't want to be divorced, but let's assume. He's backpedaling if, because his wife listens every week. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I'm I, assu- I don't want to be a fly divor- on the wall for that conversation nah, when you get I'm, home this if afternoon. I got divorced. I got divorced because I wanted to do it, right? And then I'd celebrate and have Atabe or something like that. I would look for a, a woman, and there would be the woman, the goddess. No, I don't know, man. Let's take a peek into the asylum, and this is going to be interesting because I heard a little hype about this. Let's take a peek in the asylum from my friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, haha! They're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, haha! To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, haha! It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, Take No Prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars, with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. Sexism is alive and well, but not how you may think. We all heard that the Boy Scouts now allow girls to join the mix, and that has happened with Boy Scout Troop 64. However, that troop is girls only, and the boys' version is Troop 65, which allows girls. Can you say double standard? Mm. It doesn't stop at the Boy Scouts, however, as three women from Yale University are suing the university to force the fraternities to gender integrate. The women go on to state fraternities breed a very toxic sexual culture and feature a good old boy mentality. The women go on to add that sororities should not be looked at in the same light as they don't have the same culture, nor do they create the same valuable connections. I would like to suggest to these women from Yale to seek help, and perhaps they could get a prescription for Tricox again. And that's not oh only it's safe. My. It's asylum. God. Oh, I get it. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's... Uh... There is no such thing as that. And we just lost an advertiser because you did that right in front of the rep. <laughs> My apologies, Mr. Price. And, and that's what you were all I was all happy about. You are all proud about yes, it. I, am. Yes. I still am. <laughs> is that even a real medication? Uh, that's what I, I – it took me a second to figure it out. I'm like, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where do we go from there? No, Patina, uh, <laughs> th- th- thoughts here, not final thoughts, but the, the ash, I had to break the ash off. It's well constructed. They're making good cigars there. I got to look into this company. I got to get more information of what, what, what's happening there. It's a, um, you know, that the, uh, the, the cookie there, the Girl Scout cookie that has the coconut and the chocolate. Oh, and yeah. The Samoa. The oh, Samoa. Oh, yeah. It's it's had, that, had that today on the snack authority. But you've got to get some tweezers and you got to pull the coconut out. No, I taste it because there's no coconut taste in this. There's coconut. The the graham cracker that's the cookie and the chocolate. Yeah, chocolate graham cracker. So you're exactly where I was. Yeah. So you're there. So we spoke two cigars today that have Pennsylvania in the filler. This Good also, ingredients. This also has it in the binder. Yeah. For me, this is more the the quintessential Pennsylvania cigar. It has that very distinct, uh, distinct taste of Pennsylvania. It's lost a little bit on the Balmoral, which is a smoother, milder cigar. This is a little bit more full of bodied. But if you want to experience Pennsylvania tobacco, I think this is the perfect example. This is a ten dollar cigar. This is a really top quality, really surprising to me cigar. Uh, I think I got to smoke more cigars than I never had before, but I, I run with the risk of not liking it, and then I have to say it's not good or whatever, because I I have no shut off. I got to say what it is, but this is very surprising, very very good. Okay, when we come back, the offer of the day uh, and the most perfect pairing. We're live in the Studio Twenty One Podcast Cafe. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding. 
the Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, so there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. 
This is Omar de Frias from Fratello Cigars, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we're back. We're smoking patina and getting into perfect pairings. Um, we, we basically got to this already of uh, getting a new job of uh, what you're celebrating. Is there anywhere that you got a raise? You get, the you, first you smoke the best. cigar that I smoked when I got the job here was the Hammer and Sickle Tradition Churchill. That was the very first back then. At, as didn't... you were working here or you found out you got the job? Nope. Uh no, when I the, my first day, okay, that's first day smoked. on the job. That's what I smoked. But when finding out you got the job, did you? I don't remember. And I gave you the cigar, Barry. Yes. Of what you smoked, but did you? You you went out to a cigar bar immediately following. Yes, because I knew somebody up here in yeah. New Hampshire, and I was like, all right, if I'm going to be moving here, I might as well say hi and have a friend. Yeah. Uh, what'd you get? Um, I think he gave me one of his cigars. Ah, okay. So it's par for the course for you. And Ed Didn't Sullivan have to pay for either one. Ed yes. Sullivan was severely depressed. He went from a big paying job to a low paying job, and uh, I don't change my smoking habits, as you know. Yeah. So I I always enjoy a Byron as a celebratory cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what if um. But raise anything, it doesn't matter. You're not going to change it. It doesn't change no. much for me. You know You know, I don't typically smoke inexpensive anyway. <laughs> so Typically, when I go to something and we're going to have a show on it of going in the vault and picking some old stuff out there, a lot of times I'm disappointed with, uh, like, like I was two weeks ago whenever we did the show. And Cigars, there was I, no way to predict 25 years ago what cigars were going to become they were what they were and you liked what you liked then based on what was on the market and now cigars are so much better just in general but then also the marketing is better everything's improved in the industry in 25 years so it it, it almost isn't fair to compare the older cigars with what's going on now yeah i, th I think that's it but right now i want to uh, hear the don Raphael offer of the day this is the Godfather theme. You wouldn't know this is here, but uh, Don Raphael Offer of the Day is brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price, and would you do this? And I'm prepared today for twenty dollars, and I'll get up right now and go get it. If that's uh, if you were to take it, and I got twenty in my pocket, I'm willing to give it up. Um, relight somebody else's cigar in the ashtray. You have no idea whose it is. I'll just walk over and grab one, and. Uh, Relight it and smoke the rest of it. No. Barry? No, to me, that's one of the most disgusting things sharing it with a cigar with somebody else. Couldn't pay me enough to do it. 40? Using a cutter that's. 50? <laughs> no. Don't say that. Couldn't pay me enough. <laughs> Couldn't pay me enough. If he dropped you a G note right now, you would do it. The room's too crowded, no. <laughs> you don't know where I'm going, no? I've seen people do it. For nothing. Yeah. It, You've accidentally done it? Uh, I picked up my wife's cigar by accident. That's I, a little different. I accidentally did it Thursday. Thursday, yes. Thursday. Grabbed yeah. a cigar and... You put it. Uh, you put uh, Ed, Santa yeah. Maria's cigar. And lit it. Yeah. Relit it and yeah. smoked it. And, uh, but you could tell instantly, right? Because, you know... Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't have that feel. No, and he smokes too wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Perfect cigar after you get fired. There's one that comes to mind. It's Desperado because you're saving money. Yeah, so you got you got to say, okay, I'm gonna have a money problem now. Yeah, right away, just in case I got fired. Or, or do you? The, uh, you know, if you got fired from the cigar store, are you off cigars? I got an awful lot of cigars at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with cigars for a long time. Yeah. I wouldn't be off cigars, but it'd probably be whatever I stole. Because that, that's why you lost <laughs> I, your job. I would assume that's why I lost my job. Yeah. Um, you've been fired. Laid off, we like to say. All right. Say. Okay. Uh, mutually agreed upon separation. Been there. And, and, and usually you... I'll smoke something great. Yeah? Oh, it's a relief usually. You okay. Know. It's good. And it comes with a severance package yeah. usually, right? Uh, one of them, I think, was uh, six months pay. 
Yeah. So, so you now I get it. to I got more time to smoke cigars. I go buy a box. All right. All right, let's get to the classic day in classic history brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of epic rap battles. But now it's time for the epic battle. Wow, it's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. Here's looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including... Including the classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the classic Cuban for its sweet sun-grown and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. New classic cigar coming out very, very soon. Waiting for these to come in. I got some big news. Move over, Nick Perdomo, because this is a cigar that's going to actually, they're going to lower their price, and they're already 3 bucks. Hmm. Lower their price. We'll get to that when that happens. But right now i got five questions, and I have no, so there will be no tie, hopefully, right. because I have nothing else. There can be only one. And uh, Ed Sullivan is our champion? Yes, of yeah. course. So we'll go to you, Ed Sullivan. Fidel Castro becomes the 16th Prime Minister of Cuba after overthrowing Batista, and we had Mr. Batista here on today, but not that Batista, um, the other Batista. Today, what year? Fidel Nin Castro becomes the president, 19, becomes the Prime Minister. 1959. 59, he says, Mr. Jonathan. I say 58. 58, he says. 61. 61. Everybody's right there. Somebody got two points. Ed Sullivan, damn it, two points, 1959, today, that that all happened. So Ed Sullivan, two points, and on to Mr. Jonathan. Smoking Joe Frazier knocks out Jimmy Ellis in five rounds for the heavyweight boxing title. Smoking Joe Frazier becomes the heavyweight champion, beating <coughs> Jimmy Ellis today. Smoking Joe Frazier, see where I went with that. 1955. 55. 74. 74. Unfortunately, I had 73. 73. Mr. Jonathan's going to get the point at 55. It was 1970. Fifth. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you were right on. <laughs> you feel good about that, that win? Uh, on to Barry Stein. Born today, John McEnroe. American tennis player, U.S. Open, three-time champ, Wimbledon, three-time champ, born in Germany. I bet you didn't know that. Didn't I know that? Born today, what year? 1959. 1959, he says. I had uh, 1955. 55. 1954. 54. And again, somebody has two points. And Fidel Castro. Has something in common because 1959, the same day Fidel Castro becomes the prime minister, John McEnroe is born. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. not. So who got the point on that? Barry That's Stein it. got two. So two points for Barry Stein, two for Ed, one for Mr. Jonathan, and on to Ed Sullivan. Tracy Moreau, M A R R O W. Any idea? Thank God you spelled it, because I was confused as to which Tracy Moreau it would be. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be I've never heard Tracy of. Tracy Morgan, would it? No, Tracy Moreau, a.k.a. Ice-T. Ah. He's an American musician, rapper, songwriter, actor, producer. Um, Ice-T encounters controversy over his track Cop Killer, which glamorized the killing of police officers. Since 2000, he played NYPD detective on NBC's crime drama Law & Order. Coincidence? I think not. Um, born today, Ice T. Uh, I'm going to say 1961. 61. 68. 68. I had 1960. You had 1960. Everybody is over. And we had Fidel Castro in 59. We had John McEnroe in 59. This is 58. 58 was Ice T. No points. And we have one question left. 
We have two for Ed Sullivan, two for Barry, and Mr. Jonathan has one. Mr. Jonathan's going to need two points to win. And uh, either of you guys, one point will do it for you. Whose turn is this? Uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, ready? Well, he stole my turn, but that's all right. Did I? Yeah. All right. Back to my. Back to me. Good. Okay. Um, ready, Mr. Jonathan? I'm ready. Sonny Bono, American actor, singer, and politician. He died in 1998 after divorcing Cher, but he was born today. What year? Sonny Bono. 1943. 43. 1939. 39. Wow. This this could be bad because I also had 39. <laughs> 39. It could be bad, but everybody is over. Everybody is over. It's 1935. We have a two-way tie, and that means Ed Sullivan is still the champion. Didn't that happen last week, too? Yes. yes. <laughs> someone so they, in the, uh, they have to actually beat him. Someone in the chat box wants to know, what is the best cigar to pair with Dave's off-topic coin story that brought the show to a screeching <laughs> halt? I, I heard that during the break, and why would that be off-topic? Patina is what was on the coin, and Patina is the name of the cigar brand was smoking. It was nailed on topic. It's perfect. See, I don't think you, I don't think you understand what on topic is. It's not because you can make the connection. It's other people making the connection. It's the perfect connection. That's why it's called that. Hmm. Maybe the guy has a similar story. We're smoking cigars, and you put a coin in a, in a flower pot. That's they're not really connected. I took the patina off the coin. And see, we're still talking about it because you mentioned it, and now it continues. So you got to leave the, let these things go. you got to let these things go. Patina is green, so we could talk about candelas, and that would be a reasonable thing. And to the do. band on this has is green and oh, white. Oh, it's like a patina. Correct. And there was talk about this years ago. Um, the cigar boom had happened. Some brands made it. Some brands didn't make it. And the talk was that if the cigar brand had green in it or was called Dawn anything, it was a loser. And the majority of cigar brands with green in it or Dawn on it, Dawn nobody's or whatever, um, they went under. Well, And here's a cigar band with green, and we see it with Leaf by Oscar, not Leaf by Oscar, Oscar mm -hmm. using green. And you see it, it's okay. The green isn't it. And then there's some Dons out there that ended up making it after the fact, too. Yeah. Don Pepin. Don Eduardo didn't make didn't it. Make I bought it. a box because yeah. it's so my I got name. A, yeah. That's why you bought the box? Oh, yeah. This cigar has taken on a distinct note of pistachio ice cream. Ah. That's the green in the band telling you that. <laughs> pistachio ice cream. I love, I'm a fan. You like pistachio ice cream? No. Yeah, no. you ever suck the truck the oh, truck out of the donut? <laughs> Fill it with pistachio ice cream. No. Okay. Uh, <sighs> go ahead. You got a meal bag. Get get some meal bags. All right. Uh, the Krispy Kreme killer writes through the contact mm. us page. I see him out there. Uh, I really have come to appreciate private label brands, especially the ones you started. He's talking to Dave. La Gian Havana comes with a great story, as does Dos Ombre. People really shouldn't give you crap for promoting and talking about these. I'll if a guy can't talk about something he created on his own damn show, then why have your own show? There we go. Love I, it. That's what I say. I think everyone should try your local brick-and-mortar brands. They likely were made by the same people who make the expensive sticks you smoke regularly. It is, and if I talked about it every week, I understand. But nine years, the first time we brought it up. Nine years. I figured that was enough play. Let me get about 460 in there, and then I'll throw one in for myself. My God, jeez. Can't even breathe around here. Uh, Aaron writes, uh, with respect to cigar prices from 1994 yeah. through the contact us page of thecigarauthority.com. Great episode on comparing the 1994 prices to the current ones. It was a very interesting episode. If I could make a suggestion, I would say that the 1994 prices were not adjusted for inflation. The analysis you conducted compared 1994 nominal dollars to the 2019 nominal dollars. The problem is that $1 in 1994 had more spending power than a dollar in 2019. The 1994 dollars must be adjusted in order to make a fair comparison. Well, that's why you added eggs and bread and all the different things and said, No need to worry. Okay. I already did the calculation ah. using inflation numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Oh, my God. <laughs> While the overall conclusion serious? is that cigars increased more than other products is correct, 
there are some interesting observations. For instance, the Toro Fuente Don Carlos is actually cheaper if you purchase it, purchase it today than if you purchased it in 1994. According to the show, the Don Carlos cost $150 a box in 1994 and $209 in 2019 yeah. after the inflation adjustment $150 in 1995 is equivalent to $250 and 73 cents in December of 2018 nice that's the most recent inflation data and, and that was one of the ones that went up the least by the way but okay mm -hmm. so the Don Carlos is actually 16% cheaper in real dollars also a box of Avo in 1994 costs $106 which is equivalent to $177 in real dollars well, the box yeah, that was retailing for 162 Avo is 9% cheaper in terms of real dollars. These are the only two that were cheaper in terms of real dollars. I figured you would find that interesting. I do. Love the show. Keep up the great work. Sincerely, Aaron. I thought yeah. there'd be some hate mail about my Chicago pizza comments, mm. which isn't real pizza. Somebody did. I think somebody chatted on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moment. Thomas Benolter on my yeah. Instagram page. Yeah, because he says you're eating um, Uno, Uno, which I happen to like. <laughs> but... Chicago pizza Uno's is, is, delicious. Is, is, is focaccia. You know what is really good at Uno's? Better than the pizza? Soup? And you can get it without the bacon. They make this uh, pizza dough that has mashed potatoes on the inside with cheese on top. It is phenomenal. What's it called? I can't remember. No? It, but it's not a pizza. Pizza skins. It's called pizza skins. Oh, really? So wait, it's... It's, it's mashed potatoes it's, with cheese. cheese. Any meat... They put bacon on top, but you can get it without so the bacon. So it's kind of like a shepherd's is there pie. A, is there a dough? Yeah, pizza dough. Okay. It's in a crust. It's fantastic. And you order it like it's a pizza? You order it as an appetizer while you're waiting for the pizza. Takes just as long, but <laughs> if you're going to Uno's, but, that's so the thing you, on the menu. And you're having a slice like the pizza or is it a little teeny They thing? slice it into six slices, and they give you a, some accoutrements on the side. You can dip it in. Do we have an Uno around here? We have Could. one in Nashua. We could... Well, I can't, can't, can't do a Monday and all the way to Nashua. It's too far. It is far. I don't know that there's any Uno close to us here. And I can't do it tomorrow. I'm off to Miami tomorrow. I'm off <laughs> yes, to Miami. Somebody's talking about me in the Miami area. I have to get on a plane <sighs> and straighten this out. I jealous. told you you don't jealous. have to do that. Hashtag yeah. jealous. Whatever. We've got to do what we got to do. Uh, all right. You got time for one more? Or are, we, are we good? I got time for one more. All right. Patrick writes through the Contact Us page, Tall Cigar Ashtray for Pool Area is his subject. Hey guys, love the show. It's a perfect combination of entertainment and information. Always learning and my wife is now watching with me. We apologize. Mm -hmm. I live in Houston, Texas and I'm looking for a tall, at least 24 inch ashtray for my pool area. I can always set a table beside the lawn chair Very with an tall. ashtray, but I would like something unique. Of course, I would not leave it outside all the time just while sitting by the pool. Flicking ashes on the deck is not an option. Thanks again for the entertainment every Saturday. Tall ashtray. Not deep, not okay. wide. You want a tall. I don't know why you would want a tall ashtray. Well, it, it's like one of the stand ashtrays, you know. If I was looking at... About two feet, he's saying. Two. Not, not four feet. He wants a two feet. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of a standard height for a tall ashtray. Right. Yeah? Maybe okay. He, maybe I, he's a little person. Ah. I think you look on eBay. You remember it. Like that ashtray, they used to be in every government building. Some of them are, were ornate. Uh, I think eBay's a good good. Yeah, for there's, that. Um, we carry a brand called Stinky Ashtrays. They make a regular little one, but they would be on your desk. But they have they have a version with a pedestal. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. And the it's handle stinky. looks like a and it's stainless cigar. steel, so right. you don't have to worry about. And you can leave it outside. Rusting. You could That's leave true. it outside. Yeah. You leave it outside. You might yeah. get some patina on it. Wait, right? <laughs> you don't have to put it in a, in a pot and leave it there forever. <laughs> and you know, if it, if you got too much patina, you could get baking soda and clean it, clean it off. Up. It'd be a mistake, but oh, you could do it. Let's just keep way poking bring, the bear. <laughs> way to bring the show to a screeching halt. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Well, last last thought here on patina. It's very good, and I, I I believe that the Corona is the better of the three sizes now that I've smoked them all. A lot of flavor. It's got a great burn. Sometimes with Coronas, very much like Lanceros, you get issues with the draw, but there's packed, no issue here. Packed like it, it would be a tight draw, yeah. but it's perfect. They must well, be draw testing. Well, well-made cigar. Yep. Cats off to you. you. You did a good one. Did you review the cigar? I reviewed the Robusto. Yeah, which is right on smoking. Yeah, which... Uh, 
It's finally showed up on the Toro, but I remember the pistachio ice cream notes. What a nice cigar. Nice, nice cigar. Okay, that's it. Uh, Next week, police officer turned cigar rep. There's a new rep in the business, and he holds two jobs. He's a police officer and a cigar rep. He's new, and we'll have him on and see the reason why he's jumping in. Mike LaVere from Rocky Patel Cigars joins us. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. We should make him feel at home and get some donuts. Yeah, okay, let's do that. (sighs) You've learned nothing else in the last two hours, so always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.